Um, remember uh, 1998, this is when search started. Uh, it was a smart but simple algorithm which was uh, trying to understand uh, what uh, our goal from that moment was trying to understand what user wants with uh, things which, is, uh, which he's typing or she's typing in that box and try to find the best uh, link for that. Uh, th things has changed a lot since then, but our mission has not changed. The mission remained the same, organize the world information and make it universally accessible to everybody and uh, in a useful way. So we have expanded the definition of the, the boundaries of this mission, but, uh, but the mission remains the same. In fact, by 2020, there is going to be 5 billion mobile users. Every day, there are more than 3 million new people getting connected to smartphones. So when we are trying to build the future, we have to really count to take this into the consideration and design, in this case, the assistant for really be with you on your phone, uh, on, on these smartphones for the future. So uh, let's go directly to, uh, again, the assistant. I said conversation is a big part of that. And the reason we think of conversation uh, as a core element here is that because this is the most universal interface. Everyone can do conversation. Everyone can talk natural language. From the moment that we're a young kid, uh, with, uh, kids can uh, use words and try to say what they mean to the people who might be very old. So it's basically independent of uh, education, race, uh, literacy, and uh, age. You can just uh, use natural language and try to ask what you need. So that's why conversation is very fundamental here. So we also added a, um, an extra source on top of the conversation, which is personality, to make it more delightful, fun, more engaging, but also it, uh, it makes it more acceptable when there are failures. Technology is not yet at the level which you can have the full conversation, which everything is understood. So this is why personality is helping a lot here. And what we are uh, very excited is that these conversational experiences and this conversational UI are really a scale that can be scaled very easily. So we have launched Google Assistant on multiple devices already. I will show you on phone and later we will have demos of, uh, uh, demos of Android Wear also, but there is Google Home, but there is many more devices that we want to get connected. And we also want to make sure that these natural interactions, uh, with this natural uh, speaking, you can also get connected to the apps and services and, uh, and uh, other types of, uh, and other types of uh, um, um, apps and services and devices that you might have. So um, I personally am so excited of working in this team. The reason is that because I feel that we are in the business of saving time for users. And this is uh, very important uh, for me to feel that uh, uh, we are doing something which basically frees time from people so that they can spend time on things which matter really in their life. So with no more slides, let's uh, move to the uh, uh, more risky part of my, part of my talk, which is going to be fun for you. But uh, um, um, so, so these are all live demos. I'm going to show you different aspects of uh, the assistant. So um, what you will see is uh, many of, <laughs> yeah, my password is G. Uh, you all know it now, and I have to take it. So um, I will be showing different types of things that you can do with the assistant today, but also I will show you some examples of the works which have not, is not yet live and launched, but we have them in our experimental um, 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 labs in Google. So let's get started. Hi, how are you doing, Google? Great, thanks. What can I do for you? Can you please tell me how is the weather tomorrow in Paris? It'll be sunny with a high of 17 and a low of 5 degrees Celsius. So note that I'm rather using natural language and the longer sentences and not like keywordy where how we were doing in the search boxes. Let's ask another question. How can I get to Manchester by public transport? From Grove Mill Lane, take 500 towards Watford, departing in 41 minutes. Get so, off at Beach and Grove North, stop C, walk to Watford Junction and transfer to London Midland. Very good. So we, we want to basically answer the, all the types of questions that users are asking us. These are like day-to-day -day questions, but the range of questions that people are asking is really big. So for example, uh, one type of more long tail rare questions could be something like, show me a list of rides in Europa Park. Okay, just went around. Here is a matching video. Now uh, here you also understand that this is uh, real, uh, the speech recognition failed here. List of rides in Europa Park. Here are the top search results. Okay, this is going starting wrong. with one. What I want to show you is uh, let's let's uh, change that a little bit. What is the height restriction of Blue Fire? 
You must be at least 1.31 so meters tall to ride So Blue Fire is actually a ride inside an attraction park. And we actually have to even try to answer what is the height restriction of such thing in an attraction park. So it's, it's really that the, uh, the main the reason I'm showing an example is that the range of questions is really big. And we want to answer all those types of questions. So let's go with a more newer ones type of a more complex type of questions that we are becoming capable of answering. Something like, what is the name of the movie where Tom Cruise acts in it and he plays pool and while playing pool he dances? Here is some information about the color of money. Former pool hustler Felsen decides he wants to return to the game by taking a pupil. So now let me show you what type of experiences you can have if you connect uh, uh, these types of voice interactions with other types of services uh, which uh, we could have. For example, translate. Be my Vietnamese translator. Understood. I will translate all your following messages to Vietnamese. To stop, just say stop translation. Hey, I have a problem. Can you help me? Hey, tôi có một vấn đề. Bạn có thể giúp tôi? I lost my luggage in the train. Y bị mất hành lý của tôi trong chuyến tàu. Stop translation. So, so okay. you can. You can see that how useful this could be in, uh, in some important <laughs> scenarios like this one. This happened to one of my friends, so that's why I used that particular example. Um, so another types of connection could be, for example, uh, something like, I want to be on the top of Eiffel Tower. Can you bring me there now? Opening Street View. So you can see how powerful experiences you can get from natural language view and voice to the actual uh, um, applications that you would have uh, done in some uh, other um, case, in this case, street view. Okay, so this, part, this was about answering and things about public uh, information. But the assistant is my personal assistant. It should answer things which matters to me, which are not necessarily public. For example, it can answer things like, when is my flight back to Zurich? Swiss flight 325 from IHR to ZRH leaves at 5.10 p.m. tomorrow. How is my team doing? Barcelona are first in La Liga with a total of 84 points. <laughs> now you know also my team. Um, the reason, the, the way actually the assistant knows my team is, what is my favorite team? You told me that you like Barcelona. I explicitly actually told the assistant. And this is a new type of interaction where you can actually teach things to the assistant. It remembers for you and you can personalize and improve the assistant for you. Now, let me show you some other examples of personal aspect when you merge this also with the vision and the photo and object recognition in the pictures. Something like, show me pictures of mountains, sorry. Show me my pictures of mountains from last month. Take a look at these pictures from your Google Photos. So a few weeks back I was here, and now I have this picture and I have a question about it because I don't remember the name of this mountain. Oops. So, sorry. Show me pictures of mountains from last month. These pictures should map. Show me my pictures of mountains from last month. I found this in your Google Photo. What is the name of this mountain and how tall is it? Jungfrau is 4,158 meters so tall. So that's exactly detecting what's in the pictures and trying to combine this again with uh, conversation. Let me show you another one. Show me pictures of my nephew and me drinking tea. Here's what I found in your Google photo. Isn't he very cute? So, <laughs> um, so Note that I did not tag anything on these pictures. It's all automatic through machine learning, multiple machine learning, natural language understanding, speech recognition, and vision connected to each other. Let me now uh, move to the next part of my demos, which is about context. Uh, humans, when they talk to each other, they always use context. This is how we understand each other. We don't repeat things. We use the context all the time. So let's, uh, let's show an, as an example what does that mean. Show me pictures of Thomas. Showing pictures that match. If, if I don't provide any context, this is the best guess one could do maybe. Thomas the train. Now, if I say just before that, 
Bayern Munich team roster. The roster for FC Bayern Munich includes Robert Lewandowski, Aryan Robin, Thomas Muller, and others. So now, if I ask the same question, pictures of Thomas. Pictures of Thomas Muller. This time, the assistant is actually understanding the context, and it understands that Thomas is actually that person, that, uh, that football player. Bad that Carlo is not here, because this was his team. Um, so um, let's, uh, let's, know, let's show you another type of co context, which is how conversation can happen, like follow-on types of questions. We can do things like, where is the Empire State Building? The address for Empire State Building is Empire State Building, 355th Avenue, New York, New York. One. I want to see pictures. Pictures of the Empire State Building, sure. How tall is it? The Empire State Building is 381 meters tall. Who built it? The Empire State Building was designed by William F. Lamb, Yasuo Matsui, and Gregory Johnson. When? Construction for the Empire State Building so you, started in March 17, 1930. So you can see that I have multiple follow-on questions, and at each stage, the assistant understands exactly what I mean by using the context. It's exactly like, let's say, the same way a human would do. We can try to be, it, it understands that when in this context means when was the Empire State Building built. So we don't need to repeat, we can talk more naturally and, uh, and this uh, conversation is going to be easier to be done that way. So um, context can be different types. For example, location is another context and which should help also these ambiguate things. If I talk about spa at this moment, because we are in this hotel, we would think of the spa in this hotel. So let's try that too. Show me pictures of the spa. These pictures should match. So these are actually the pictures of the spa in our hotel, the Grove. So again, this is very important to use context everywhere possible to make these interactions to be easier. As my last demo, I want to um, uh, show you that we also have, I mean, you, meant, you noticed that uh, speech recognition failed one times or two times. Now, I want to show you that we actually made lots of improvement on trying to improve speech recognition in a noisy environment. For that, I will need your help. So at some point, I'm going to ask you that all of you make as much noise as you can. Be creative, shout, scream, clap hands, or whatever. And um, I will ask also uh, that my mic get uh, caught. And I will ask a question like, when is Barcelona playing next? Uh, it might fail, it might work, we can, we can see. But uh, let's uh, finish it with that. So please be creative and make as much noise as you can. You should try to make me fail. Thank you. Thank you.